The author, Arthur, the author refers to all those well-known and revered people from the past as, quote, a great cloud of witnesses. They surround us. This cloud of witnesses to what God can do when we listen, when we respond, and when we yield ourselves. But he said something that his readers needed to understand, that they were surrounded on all sides by heroes, by people of faith, by people who were silently cheering them on. Yes, they had been ordinary people in their lifetime. They had struggled with the inner forces of good and evil, of belief and doubt. Some of them had stumbled and had fallen, but like David, had repented and tried again. And you know, if you study their lives and if you use the imagination uh, as you read these accounts, you know they didn't succeed every time, but they came back and they tried and they tried and they tried again. And the author of the book of Hebrews says, you are surrounded by the same kind of people that you are. People who can achieve, people who can accomplish, people who can be witnesses for Jesus Christ, and all of these people who are surrounding you are cheering you on. Our church is in a time of transition not just between the first hundred years of service in this community, but we're at a time of transition because our whole culture is in a time of transition. In our lifetime, in the lifetime of even the youngest person here, we have seen a culture that goes from 95 percent of people saying, I believe in God, I believe there is a God, to a culture which now, uh, in which now 65 percent say, I believe that. We're going from a culture where a majority, really, truly, a majority of people took part in worship services of whatever faith tradition to a time when now about 20% of the people are actively involved in the life of the church. So we're in a time of great transition. We're struggling. The faith community is struggling. And we need to struggle with it to find a place of service to Christ that makes a difference in our world. Amen. People about whom we've read were saints, not of their own doing, but of the doing of the Lord God. You know, we commemorated the 100th anniversary of Plymouth Church in June. And I would like for us, in this, even in this time of great transition in our culture, in our church, in our community, to believe and to know that we are still surrounded by the saints. who worshiped here, who believed that this small community of faith 
could make a difference in the lives of many people. We are. Not through our worship service, unfortunately, but we are making a difference in the lives of many persons. The names of many of the saints who surround us are engraved on these memorial plaques. As a matter of fact, there's one right over here that's dedicated to my mother. My mother was not a member of Plymouth Church, but she was, she was a woman uh, that for so many years helped so many people that uh, when I read this, uh, this saying that helping others is the rent we pay for our time here on earth, the first person I thought of was my mother because she was always doing something for somebody else. Helping others is the rent we pay for our time here on earth. Photographs of many of those saints are on the DVD that we did. Pictures of the saints who have blessed us, some whom we knew and some whom we did not know personally. But they are surrounding us. We are surrounded by the saints. And they are cheering us on in the formidable task that is ours today. You know, there probably is, is no other act of worship in the church that more reminds us that we are not only surrounded by the saints, but that through God's grace, we are called at one and the same time to be his saints and his servants in the world today. The great cloud of witnesses that surround us remind us that it is through God's grace, through his love, through his forgiveness, that we ourselves have the high honor bestowed upon us to be called the saints of God. And so as Paul said to the little church in Philippi, a little home church, might have been about the size of our congregation this morning, it might have been a little larger, it might have been a little smaller, but he began his letter to the saints who are in Philippi. May we hear those words this morning to the saints who are at Plymouth Congregational Church in San Diego. Grace and peace to you. That is the message of this table. That is the message of God's love to us. May we hear it, may we heed it, and may we behave as the saints of God in this place. Amen.